Hi there, I'm Keith, and year after year, update after update, I always think Photoshop is going to finally change its defaults, but every time I set up a new version of Photoshop, I'm still updating these same settings. Here are my top 10 Photoshop tips, tricks, and preferences. Shout out to Art School for this first tip, and it's in a panel you pretty much live in when you're using Photoshop, the Layers panel. Let's open a document. Go to the Layers panel, Layers panel menu, Panel options, and for thumbnail size, make this the largest option. I have no idea why this isn't the default. My next tip piggybacks off of this panels options box and it's directly below the thumbnail size, and it is the thumbnail contents. I'm not sure why entire document is selected by default here. When you have a complex project with multiple layers, seeing the entire document in a thumbnail size makes it difficult at a glance. This option should be layer bounds. Layer bounds will scale the thumbnail to show what's actually in the layer. So now we have larger layer panels and the thumbnails actually show us what's in the layer. No idea why this isn't the default behavior, but here we are. My next tip for working with Photoshop will benefit you while you're working on your own, but it is essential when you're working with others. This is to properly name and group your layers. How many times have you opened a Photoshop document to see layer one, layer two, layer two underscore copy dash final. These are not helpful names and taking time to name your layers will help you work faster and it's just good practice. If you have multiple layers that are related but you don't have time to label each one, you can just group them and name the group. Having a tidy top level of properly named layers will allow you to work faster, but it also allows anyone else to open your files and immediately know what you're doing. It's the ultimate nerd flex to have people actually want to get files from you and not somebody else because they know exactly what's going on in your properly organized and labeled document and they're not sifting through a ton of layer one underscore two dash finals. My fourth tip is about using the selection tool and auto select is checked by default here but you should not be using auto select at all. I'm not sure why the default method is selected to auto select other than to help beginners navigate the layers panel easily. But once you get a lot of layers in a document, it becomes very difficult and auto select is your worst enemy. So with the selection tool selected, we'll uncheck auto select on the top left. So if we're not using auto select, what is the better way to select things then? Hover over what you wanna select and right click on the document and select your properly named layer. This becomes more important the more layers you have and is another reason to have a very tidy and properly named layers panel. It will help you work faster and other people will like getting your documents. My fifth tip for Photoshop is a giant productivity booster and it is to learn the hotkeys. I'm not gonna bore you with all the hotkeys since my first video is dedicated to them and it absolutely tanked. So uh, I will save you from that, but it is something that you should be looking up and they are a huge time saver. You should learn the basic ones like how to select different tools, change colors and create layers. Tip number six is another option that I assume will be turned off with every release, but somehow it just slips through the cracks every time. And that is the hyphenation option. For some reason, this is turned on by default and it drives me nuts. Open a document and select the paragraph panel and uncheck hyphenate. This will allow words to break naturally without adding annoying hyphens. And speaking of text, tip number seven has to do with how you write text in Photoshop. Most people select the text tool, click, and then just start typing. This is really frustrating if you're getting files for someone or you're trying to manipulate text in a natural way. It's easy to break the letting and all kinds of stuff. So the best way you can possibly work with text is to click on the text tool or T and then click and drag your text box out. This will allow your text to naturally wrap and updating columns of text is really easy. It's a pretty basic but a really common mistake. Another common mistake is to never add, remove, or arrange your panels. If you're making a digital painting, there is no reason to have the character panel open. If you're making a corporate flyer, you probably don't need the brush library panel open. If you quickly wanna get rid of all of your panels, you can press tab quickly and that will remove all of them. Okay, that's the last hockey. I'm not gonna bore you guys with those. My ninth tip will be familiar if you're a pre-creative cloud user and that is to remove the application frame that surrounds your current project in panels. Go to window and uncheck application frame. 
This allows you to move your panels around and see what's going on in your desktop behind it while you're working. I do find myself being more productive when I'm not using the application frame and I can see what's going on behind my document and move the panels around a little bit easier. I just find I can layer documentation or reference material behind what I'm doing and still be able to tab through it quickly, especially if I don't have multiple monitors and I'm working on a laptop screen. For tip 10, we're going to quickly tear through the preferences panel. To get there on a Mac, go to Photoshop preferences, or if you're on a PC, there's a, you can't see it, but on a PC, go to uh, edits and then preferences, general preferences. If you're using a lot of actions or manipulating images, you're probably no stranger to the history panel. Let's head over to Photoshop preferences, performance, history states. The default is 50. If you need more history, you can increase this number. If you wanna get a little bit better performance, you can decrease this number. I would not go lower than 25 though. And if you really wanna ruin someone's day, set this to one. You didn't hear this from me though. When you first open up Photoshop CC right out of the box, you'll see the recently used files. Uh, to clear these files, you can go to file, open, and clear recent at the bottom. So these are my tips and tricks for Photoshop that save me a lot of time and allow me to work really quickly. A lot of these might seem obvious after you've heard them uh, and it would make sense for these to be the defaults, but for some reason, after all these years, Adobe still has not made these default updates to Photoshop. Do you have any updates that you use in your Photoshop? Let me know in the comments down below. I always like learning little tweaks and everything that you guys are doing too. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other videos or this one that the Google bot recommends for you. Thank you guys for watching to the end and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, that video looks pretty interesting. You should watch that. Check it out. That thing looks pretty cool, whatever it is.